Right, Mr. Harry Brook, um, future superstar, thank you very much for giving up your time. I know, well, you're not very busy, but you're filling your time well. So thanks for giving your time up, mate. It's much appreciated. Um, no and we've had a lot of good questions sent in. So I was going to ask Stu to ask the first one from his bike, but obviously uh, we've lost him. So <laughs> Stu, try, try ask the first question, mate. Can you say something for me? Oh, we've just got wind. It's not going to work. I hear you. No, we'll get on with proper questions then. Um, as always, Harry, the, 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 we've got a lot of keen young cricketers that, that, that dial into these calls and, and they all want to know what was your route into to the professional game because a lot of people, have we've, we've had the likes of Josh on, Boise, we've had Brooksy, different, we've had Puds, we've had Brez, who seemed to just start playing while they were in nappies. Um, so what were your route into the professional game, mate? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably a bit similar to Brezza's. Um, as soon as I could walk, I was out playing playing with anybody. I used to grab anybody who I could and get them to throw at me. So um, it helped that my grandma lives right right on my uh, home feet ground. And I used to stay there quite a bit when I was younger and uh, just get my mates around and go out in the field. And after school, I'd... Uh, Come rain or shine, I'd be uh, out in the nets with my granddad and and having a bat. I have been I have been netting in the rain before. When you say literally back onto the field, I've seen a picture. It's like the boundary extends into the garden, doesn't it? Well, yeah. It's there's no fence, so it's just straight onto onto the cricket field. So it's, you had uh, no yeah. choice. You were playing cricket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could say that. And. Was it always just batting? Were you always batting? Because normally when I when it, you know when I was a kid, I was the one bowling all the time. But you you were lucky enough to get the bat in your hand. Well, apparently when I was younger, I used to just as soon as I got out in the nets, my mates would take my bat and ball with me and uh, and go home. So apparently I was a bit of a nightmare. Um, Is there anything? But to... yeah, I think I, I think I think it was just I think it was mainly batting with a bit of bowling here and there. Quite a lot of catches though. You do bowl though, don't you? It's not you're not just an out and out batsman. We are we are gonna see at some point some of them right arm ghosties, aren't we? Yeah, I bowl. I've had I've got a first class wicket, Bryce. And a T20. I'm, I'm I would I did I want I didn't try and I was trying not to sound as sarcastic there. I've seen you bowl, you can't <laughs> bowl. Who, who was your first class wicket? Um Eddie Byron from uh, Somerset and Matt no. Critchley. Right, Tofa. Yeah. Well, um, no, no, it's nothing special, but it, uh, I can do a job mainly, mainly from a, for a few overs in the championship cricket, hopefully, and and uh, just get the get the seamers ready to go again. You'll be one of those with the golden arm, won't you? Nothing's happening. Yeah. Throw a ball to Harry and see what happens. Definitely, definitely. So, from playing in Granddad's back garden and getting every man and a dog to bowl at you whenever they could, um, did you go county age group cricket academy, second team, first team? Was that the the route in? Uh, yeah, I started from under 11s um, and obviously I just went, I went straight up from there. I think I played, I think I, I played an academy game when I was about 14 and then a couple of years later I got an academy contract and at 16, 15 or 16 I played the second team game and and from there I just, I just carried on playing second team and did fairly well, had a good year and then I uh, got given a first team opportunity. So without playing that down, that's quite young it, to be playing second team and getting you, you know, an academy game at fourteen. That's quite young. Yeah, well, I was I actually came in because Elliot Callis got injured in second team, so I came in and, and replaced him and and got a few runs. So I uh, yeah, I managed to keep my spot kind of and and um, and yeah, took the opportunity. Is that not part of professional sport though? Taking the opportunity when it comes your way, grab it with both hands. You hear that all the time, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. I think if you can take opportunities, then you'll go very far. Good lad. Um, so, by the time you're 14, was cricket a genuine profession for you? What Was it, I, I could be good at this and I could go all the way? Or were you always going to be a professional cricketer from being 10? Well, my dad always says to me, I, I used to just say, I'm going to be a professional cricketer. As soon as I could talk, I was like, I'm going to be a professional cricketer, no matter what. And and then I went to uh, I went to Sedba, Sedba school mainly to to go play cricket at the age of thirteen. So um, I didn't I didn't really play I didn't I stopped playing rugby when I was when I joined there and 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 kind of stuck to the non contact sport so I didn't get injured or or hurt myself for cricket for the cricket. Yeah, no season. disrespect, but you you look better built for cricket than rugby. 
You'd be surprised. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> You're um, good on the wing. <laughs> so you, you must have had the benefit of the modern game and modern coaching. You must have had the benefit of working with some unbelievable coaches throughout the years, as well as obviously dad and granddad that started it all. Um, we always get asked, and, and, and it's here again from Charlie and Rafe, best piece of advice that you were given as a youngster that most helped you? I think it's just the old cliche, just enjoying it. I think when I was younger, I when I was playing academy, I, I went through a bit of a bad patch. I wasn't scoring any runs. And, and Damsey came up to me one day, the academy coach, and said, right, you're going to give me a tenner at the start of the day. And if you enjoy it, you get the tenner back. If you don't enjoy it, I keep the tenner. So... I think, I think, yeah, just enjoying it as much as possible um, is the main thing because at the end of the day, you're playing it because you, in, you enjoy playing it. So keep playing with a smile on your face and, and yeah. There's a, there's a common theme there, mate. Every, everyone has said that. Um, Brez said, play every game as it's your last. Brooks, he appreciated everything that he was doing because he'd had a job before that and then he came into the professional game late. So I think he's got a different appreciation for it. Um did that little trick from Damsey help you? Did that bring a bit of realisation to it? Probably not at the time, but I think it does now, definitely, um, especially in the past couple of years. When you're not getting runs, it's obviously not the most enjoyable if you get out and then you've got to go field all day. Um, but yeah, I think, like I say, you can still enjoy fielding, but um, just enjoy everything about cricket because you're not going to be playing it for your whole life. Certainly not. So you say enjoy fielding. Um, what sort of time do you spend working on that fielding? Is it a case of I'll bat for ninety percent of my time and then I'll go do a bit of fielding just so I'm I'm up to scratch? Or are you seeing that as a potential way into future squads and higher higher honours because my batting will get me so far and then my fielding will get me the rest? I think um, for me personally, I'm I'm fairly fairly good at fielding. I've got a good arm and I'm I'm good at catching. So. I don't feel like I really need to do loads. Um, we're doing two sessions at the minute um, a week, um, so yeah, I'll be I'll be batting the majority, but I, I enjoy batting, so <laughs> I'll try and get take every opportunity to bat. Um, but yeah, it's obviously there's through going through the academy. It's, there's a lot of fielding. You probably do fielding nearly every session, so you kind of learn all the skills from a young age, and then it's just carrying on doing that, doing all them skills um, as you get older. Is it just a case of if you learn the basics when you get to your level now, things just happen quicker? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's completely right, yeah. Right, so that's it, nail the basics now. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've got from talking to other players? I love this question because you guys have got, you've had some unbelievable overseas already in your short career at that level. So from talking to other players, what, what are you learning? What's the best stuff you're taking from them? I don't think... I think watching, actually, for me, I learn a lot more from watching. Um, for example, watching Root play last year in the T20s. Um, everybody thinks you should go all guns blazing in T20 and you should be getting 200 every innings or whatever. Um, but you just watch a, watch him go about his game. He doesn't really hit a ball in the air until until he really needs to. So um, taking low risk low risk options with still that high reward is is a, a massive learning for me. Would you say that's a criticism of your own game then, from maybe before when you might have gone too hard too early? Yeah, hundred percent. I think in the in the past few past few years playing T Twenty cricket, I've I've tried to hit sixes more instead of hitting fours. You can hit so you can hit so many fours and just split gaps. Whereas if you hit try hit a six, you can you can get out every time. So I think there was there was that last innings I played last year in the T20 against Derbyshire was um, was huge for me. Would you call that maturity? Would you Absolutely. say? Absolutely. Well, I think like I said, just from watching Root Black Bat, I just I just tried to copy him really and and took the low risk options. Um, for example, sweeping in front of square and, and splitting the gap between deep square and deep mid wicket was, was probably the best option that day. So I thought that's my best boundary option. And, and if I don't get it quite right, it's the, the, the only, uh, the lowest reward I get would be a, a one. And I, I'm not really going to get out playing it. So. Sounds like you've got it all figured out, mate. 
hopefully I can do it next year every year. <laughs> well, we hope so, pal. We're just glad that we're going to be able to get in ground and watch. Looking yeah. forward to it. Hopefully. So you've just mentioned your field and you're doing a couple of sessions a week. What What's the rest of your training routine? What, what do you dedicate towards the fitness side of it? How much is weights? How much is running? And then obviously we know you're back 24-7, so what's sort of Well, the minute obviously it's been we've been difficult with COVID and, and the restrictions and everything. So we, we, I think we're in groups of four or five at the minute. So we've got a seamer, a spinner, a batter and a keeper. Um, we've just got back to, to facing bowlers. Um, so that's good because it was all just sling and m- machine before, um, and we're just we're just getting ready for the season really, and and I think we we do three three gym sessions a week. We're, we're doing something every day, um, fitness and and strength wise, um, but then cricket cricket's every day. So whether that be fielding, batting, bowling. Brilliant. As have you liked this format or would you prefer just the old routine of, of pre-season or have you adapted quite well to this? I've, yeah, I've adapted quite well, but obviously I'd rather it be back to normal. I'd rather be facing different bowlers. I'm, a, I'm only really facing Fish and, and Josh Sullivan at the minute. So I think if I could face a few different bowlers with different actions and and whatnot, it would be, uh, it'd be a lot better. So you but personally that's, prefer that's the variety? Oh yeah, definitely. You're not going to get all plain sailing in a game, so... I think if you can if you can work as hard as you can and and against different seamers, um, then it's then it'll put you in good stead. Good man. So you'd say you're always looking for that next challenge, whether it be training matches. Uh, well, I I just started a trigger last year, and if you're facing someone who's quite quick through the crease, you might be a bit late on the trigger. So I think that's that's um, it's good for me. I don't know about other players, but. For me, time timing of my trigger is really important. So, um, facing different bowlers is is key for me. Let's talk about that trigger a little bit, Harry, because a lot of players, a lot of young players, d- might have one. They might want one. Um, how come you brought it in, or how did you change it? Um, I I brought I brought it in myself actually because a couple of years ago I was just falling over slightly to the offside and getting out LBW and bowled quite a bit. So I've um, I've gone over to middle and off and I'm triggering onto off stump. Game plan is quite simple. Just wait for the bowler to bowl at me, bowl straight, and then I can work him onto the leg side. Anything short and wide, obviously, is, it should be four. Um, but just try to leave as well as possible. And I think it's just got me in such better positions with my head coming forward and and um, I'm, a, I'm a lot more still. Brilliant. That does sound like a simple game plan, to be fair. is that Obviously, we're talking red ball there, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Have you done, obviously, the, the red ball part of the season comes first. Has that been the main focus? Have you dedicated any white ball time or has it all been red ball? Uh, it's actually been more white ball at the minute because we'll have a we'll have a block of three, two, three weeks just to do red ball to get us ready before the season because we, we won't really get much time to do white ball when the season comes around. So we've uh, we've been doing quite a bit at the minute. I think especially white ball is probably, probably actually harder for skill-wise, especially as a bowler because you've got to bowl three or four different balls in red ball you can just swing it away all day long and and hope for the best so oh, your best you, ball. white ball you've got to nail yorkers slow balls bounces and everything so do you see it as um just just hearing them what you said would you say it's harder for the bowlers to practice and you guys have just got a license so you know almost if, if you get it wrong as a batter in white ball that's fine because you're expected to try extravagant shots and things like that whereas it's the bowlers to get wrong. Does that make sense? Well, I think that's where that low that low risk with higher reward comes in again. Um, like for me, if Matthew Fisher was bowling straight Yorkers with four men out on the leg side, I probably wouldn't try to hit him over the leg side. I'd, I'd probably try to hit him through the offside and hopefully get his line wrong. But that's where the bowlers have got to be smashing the skills. If, the, if they're getting the line wrong, then they obviously need to work on it a bit more and... and uh, Keep going, keep bashing the skills. Nice. Seb's just asked, how did how did you prepare physically and especially mentally for batting in first class cricket? I don't really think. <laughs> um, Go, can you well, explain that comment? Can you just explain that comment a little bit? Because clearly you do, because you've just you've spoken a lot about thinking about batting and you've got game plans. What do you mean? I don't think. Do you, is it, are you relying on your reactions and your gut instincts once you're playing? 
Because you, you do yeah. think about the game, we know that. Yeah, well, I've, I've tried to stop thinking about the game as much. Um, but I don't really like watching cricket. So I'll try and I'll try and not watch as much as possible before I'm going out to bat. I can't, I kind of know what all the bowlers are doing anyway from watching watching stuff before. So I'm, I'm mentally prepared and physically prepared for what what I'm going to be facing when I get out there. But on the on the day of the game, I don't really I don't really like watching. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of watching it. And before I go out to bat, I won't, I'd be just being a bit annoying around the changing room probably. <laughs> I was just about to say, I bet you're a nightmare. If you're going in at four and there's a bit of a stand and then three gets some runs, I bet you're a nightmare, aren't you? Well, I'm usually at five, so I'm, it's even worse. <laughs> so There's usually sweets on the table, though, so I'm probably just eating them. <laughs> Sugar high, even worse. But in terms of your comment about not thinking, what you're saying is you're backing your preparation to be done. Therefore, you can go out and play, just play your own game. Yeah, definitely. Um, this year, I'm I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna I'm just gonna try to do all my preparation the day before a game and not have a bat on the day of the game. And um, so I, I feel I did that a few years ago and I felt more prepared then. Whereas if I go in for a bat for ten minutes on the day of a game, hit them bad, get out a few times, it's like, oh god, what's gonna happen now? Right. Well, what if you have a stinker the day before that? Are you gonna then have a knock well, on the game? I'm going to have a, a long enough bat to fix it. <laughs> so you, you, when you're training, do you, do you go for volume? Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like my technique at the minute is in, in such good order and I, I know my game at the minute. So I think just volume and, and just hitting as many balls as I possibly can for me. Good. Seb, I hope that that's answered. If not, just put something in the chat, mate, about uh, if you want any more detail on that. Um, do you do anything specifically mentally, Harry? Do you have any routines that you go through, any visualisations, or are you just so relaxed that you just you just play? Uh, yeah, I just I try to be as relaxed as possible. The only routine I really have, and I like to call it routine, not superstition, is that I put my left pad on first and then my right pad, that's it. Um and then I do, and I do a few other things. Um, but yeah, that's I try to be as relaxed as possible, and I don't I don't really get nervous either, so it's it's quite chilled. Well, that go there goes your next question, Charlie, because he said, "How nervous were you when you made your debut for Yorkshire at Lords, and how many runs did you get?" I actually can't remember. I got I got thirty eight runs first in the duck second inning. Um, I wasn't I don't I I wouldn't have been nervous. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't really remember. It was a few years ago. Right. It was a good day, though. So no, you just don't get, no matter what the situation you go into bat, no matter the venue, no matter the crowd size, no nerves ever? Not really. I try I try to calm myself down. And, and, like, I feel the pressure, but I don't I don't really feel nerves. Like, I know if we're chasing a big score, I can feel the pressure, and I know that like, we're going to have to take a risk or whatever at some point. But I don't... I don't really like the word nerves. Nervous. You said you calm yourself down. Have you got any advice you can pass on to these guys about how you do that? Yeah, well, obviously, just try and try and walk away for a second. If in in our game in T Twenty cricket, especially the bowlers, the spinners, especially, they're gonna they're gonna try ball the ball, turn back around, and try and bowl it as quick as possible again. Um, so I think just walking away from the game and having a look at the field and. Seeing if anything's changed, I think that's that was really big for me last year, and and just taking a second. Always good advice, definitely. Just to, to break the routine, and so you're ready. So it's the game being played on your terms, rather than definitely. just letting letting. I mean, if Werner's jumps in at, at this point and comes at it from a different angle, so a spinner bowling. Um, are you there, Werner's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Um, what Harry's just said there is that the polar opposite of what you want to do. Do you want to get that overballed and get it get get out of there and go do your fielding? Um, yeah, I used to get through overs as quick as I could, especially if you can get one or two dots. If you can turn that one dot into three or four, then before you know it, you're just thinking, if I don't go for a boundary here, I've got out my over and he might take a risk feeling a bit rushed as well. So, yeah, but... 
kind of its downsides for the spinners because, as you know, if we get it for six, you probably want to get that ball and, and go again as quick as you can, don't you, sometimes? Um, but it's not bad sometimes to take a moment to think about things and have a plan and talk to your teammates. But, yeah, it's time. It's probably managing your games. Is it a time I need to ball fast overs or is it a time I need to slow it down? And Yeah, managing your time as well as your opponent comes with experience that I think doesn't it trust in your gut instinct yeah, yeah. Harry who uh, Hector wants to know who's the fastest bowler that you've faced um, Mohamed Amir or yeah, Stain uh, sorry dropping some names there that's fine um, mate we expect that we want that uh, harder to build you and quite quick He's a, a few he's years ago. Different yeah, he's, a big he's, he's, he's a big lad. Yeah, the others are skiddy, aren't they? Yeah, he's a big lad. So, um, anyone that's ever genuinely scared you, or did you just back yourself and think, all right, he's quick? You acknowledge the quick, but you're all right with it. I'd, I'd rather get hit than get out. So nobody, nobody really scares me. I'd rather, I'd rather. Yeah, I'd rather get hit and get hurt than get out. So that's how much value I try to put on my wicket. Have you always yeah, no. like that? Or has that come in since you've yeah, started playing yeah. first team? Absolutely. It's all, I've, I think I've always been like that. Yeah, definitely. Right. But you've had some falling outs with your dad and grander, haven't you? <laughs> Never out. Um, <laughs> so you've ne- who, who was the bowler that you feared the most? Now, that, that's a different question. That might not just be pace. That could be the skill level or... Or something different. Uh, Chris Bryce at Woodland. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. <to hear> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, feared the most. It's a good question. Any spinners that worry? Any of these mystery spinners that that can take it both ways? I don't really. I don't think I've faced a mystery spinner yet. I'd probably say like uh, Sam Cook from Essex, who's just always nibbling around at your off stump, and and you, you can swing it both ways. He's, he's um, yeah, he's a good bowler. He's always looking to get you out as well, so he's uh, he's really good. He's not quick, but he's he's always nagging at your stumps. Interesting that any young seamers that did you hear that sort of consistency is what worries you. Doesn't give you anything to hit. No, absolutely. I think you can just look at Stephen Patterson, for example, and, and Ben Code. They're always, they're always nagging at your stumps and that's why they've done so well so far in the career and, and got so many wickets. Yeah, they yeah, the genius. Absolute genius, those two. So, Harry, just rewinding the clock to under 18, under 19 days, when did you get involved in the England setup? Um, I actually got picked when I was about 17 for a, a series against Sri Lanka in England, I think someone got injured, so I got sent down for a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, and then and then and then the next tour I was selected and went out to it was Dubai my first tour and uh, did fairly well out there. So they picked me for the series against India and India and, and so on, so on. Right. So you were in the three lines, and then you were asked to captain. Is that due to the fact that you'd already probably played for the, that at that level for a couple of years? You were the most experienced head. Yeah, I reckon so. Probably, I think. Yeah, I'd been around. I'd been around that group for quite a while, and and got to know the coaches and stuff. So, I, yeah, I was probably around it more than more than the other lads I played with, and and at the time I probably was a senior player player in that side. What sort of pride are we talking there? If if you're asked to captain your country, what 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 were you feeling? What were the sensations there? Yeah, it was obviously very good. It was a, a big honour and privilege to to be able to do it, uh, especially in the World Cup. With we we're on TV almost every game, so every all my friends and family were watching back home, and and uh, we did fairly well until Australia until we played against Australia. So um, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, got some runs as well, didn't you? Personally as well, so you 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 went yeah. okay. I think I think captaincy actually helped me help me score some runs. Um, obviously, I want to win. I want to win a lot, not being captain. But I think being captain, it makes you makes you want to win even that slight bit more, um, because you feel like if you do lose, then it's it's more on your head. So 
um, I think it helped me quite a bit to score runs and and um, I felt like I, we were in a good place as a, as a team. Interesting that because there's that age old debate in there whether you give the captain city your best player and is that too much of a burden? But it obviously helped you. It focused you. Well, I, I, I would not know what it'd be like now if you hadn't done it for so long. But yeah, uh, yeah, I think it definitely helped me when I was out there. Um, so we've got you've had a taste of the international scene. Um, I think I already know the answer to this one, but do you still have aspirations of, of breaking into the England squad? And what do you see as your best way into that? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think my best way is probably definitely red ball at the minute. I think if I go well, get a few hundred, score a few runs in the next couple of years, and you never know anything can happen and injury here or there, then I could I could be in and uh, hopefully I can make that spot my own. In terms of the England setup at the moment, did, did, did every young player coming through, you, you would assume you play county cricket first as white ball, but the England setup as it is, there's so many players, the depth for each position is massive. You've just said there, interestingly, the red ball, clearly we're struggling uh, somewhat at the moment. So is, is that something that's shared amongst other professionals that actually, I used to think I play white ball first, but it's definitely red ball where I'm going to get my first go at, at, at England. I think it's red ball is still definitely the pinnacle of the game, and I want to, I want to play, and I want to play Test cricket and and play against the best players in the world and alongside them. So I don't, I don't, I think you've probably asked that to many players at my age in the country, and they'd probably say they'd rather play white ball, or because um, that's where the money is. So I think quite a few people are money driven, but for me, I'm definitely, I'm definitely runs driven. Yeah, I must admit, when I, when I hear people now say, yeah, that, you know, test cricket's the pinnacle, it's the ultimate test, that's what I want to play. In the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, are they telling the truth? Because I, the, the monetary value on those white ball contracts is far exceeds the, you know, the red ball stuff and shorter format, more travel, it looks more glitz and glamour. Um, so I, I'll trust you that you, you're saying red ball, but I, I don't believe everyone when they tell me that. No, yeah, I, def I definitely do. I definitely do want to play red ball. Good man. Good I, I still do think it's the pinnacle. Obviously, there's there's some big big competitions out there like the IPL and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, def definitely Test cricket's the top of my uh, top of my list. Good man. Well, ironically, you've just been picked up in a white ball competition. Um, how did that? How did you find out? What was that like? I had absolutely no idea that I was going to get picked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when when I got told, I was obviously over the moon. Um, I got I got so set set in my head that I wasn't going to get picked up because if I didn't, then I wouldn't I wouldn't be so devastated. But thankfully, I did get picked up, and I was absolutely buzzing. Um, Gailey, I was in the middle of a session actually. Fusey had just given me out LBW, and I didn't agree with it. And, um, so I was in a pretty poor poor mood. Um, <laughs> and Gailey came up to me and said, "Have you checked your phone?" and and gave me a fist bump. So yeah. Um, I had a big, big grin on my face for the rest of the day. Brilliant. Well, rest of the week. Still so got one now. A, yeah, I was going to say, it's uh, <laughs> something to be proud of, mate. I'm yeah. assuming over the moon with that and, and really excited. Absolutely. I can't, I can't wait. We've got some unbelievable players in our squad um, and hopefully I can play a few games. Yeah. For those that didn't know, Harry's just been picked up in the 100 draft. So... Um, the new competition that's going to be all over everyone's TVs and Headingley's going to be packed, hopefully, for every game during the summer holidays and the big one that didn't actually get off the ground last year. So all the best, Harry, in that. Um, Thank you. Very proud of you, mate. Well done. Thank the, you. Um, you know those sort of phone calls that come in or um, getting your Yorkshire cat, you know, those sort of things. How are, the, how are those communicated to you? The phone calls, do, you know, do you get an email? Do you get a text? How does it work? Well, my Yorkshire debut, Gailey rung me up and said, look, you've done really well. You've scored a few hundreds. Um, we're going to take you down to Lords next week in the squad. Um, whereas this one, <laughs> just got an email and, and got a couple of got a couple of texts and emails telling me I was in and, and yeah, and got a fist bump by Gailey. That's it. Get back in there and keep back. Yeah. Modern day game in that area. Have you got an agent that does this sort of stuff for you or is all this just a um, complete surprise all the time? No, yeah, yeah, I've got an agent. He puts me in all the drafts and, and everything like that. So right. he's a he's a big help, and and I think he'll have had quite a big um, something to do with that with that with that selection. Well, that's his job, isn't it? Yeah. 
that's good. Um, so regarding the hundred new format, um, are you going to do anything different in terms of your preparation? I think I'll probably, obviously it's 20 balls less. So the, the, the game's probably going to be moving faster. You're going to have to hit, you're going to have to go early with, with trying to hit sixes and whatever and trying to take big overs. Um, so I'll probably work on my um, striking game a little bit. Probably work on my striking game a little bit, sorry. Um, and just, and just um, like I said earlier, trying to take them low risk options instead of, instead of trying to bomb it straight away. But, with control and and if I, and then if I in the last few overs I can hit it out of the park that'll be a, a big help. Absolutely, it could. Um, have you you won't have had time to digest it yet? But would you see this as a springboard opportunity because it's going to be watched around the world? All the competitions that are going on everywhere else. Are you seeing this as an opportunity to potentially go away next winter or get drafted into other competitions? Yeah, absolutely, but. At the end of the day, I'm playing for Yorkshire first, and I've completely got my head set on on scoring runs for them. Um, the hundred isn't till the end of the season yet, but it, obviously, it's a good it's a good way in for for other coaches and staff to see me around the world playing, and hopefully, it can it can bring me some more some more gigs. Sure, will hopefully, mate. So you've mentioned the squad you've got. Who are you looking forward to playing with? <laughs> Um, I've actually played with Finch before on the second team for Yorkshire, so um, I think playing with Stokes will be pretty good. <laughs> He's obviously the best play, best, best all rounder in the world, and hopefully I can learn some things off him. Uh, we've got Chris Lynn as well, who's a, a good striker of the ball. So, like I said before, I can if I want to try to get better at hitting it out of the ground. He's probably my best man. So, um, yeah, there's some big players in there, and then we've got Majib. Majib, the, the Afghanistan mystery spinner. So it'll be a it'll be a challenge facing him in the nets, but I'm looking forward to it. So every every inch of that, you, you've never faced a mystery spinner. You can do that. You can play with one of the best all rounds in the world. You can train with Linny. You can, if anyone not not know who Chris Linny, just have a look at him on YouTube. He's actually hit balls out of grounds and it's roofs and all sorts. Don't he? He's hit miles. All sorts. Can he? Lynn Sanity, that's what they call him, isn't it? It didn't they make it? I think the minimum is on bat as well. So that what? <laughs> so it's not just the playing opportunity and the exposure, but it's that learning environment as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. When you get to play against the best and play with and against the best players in the world, it's going to be it's going to be quality, and I really can't wait to can't wait to get out there and, and train with them and meet them. Brilliant. I think um, we've got. Kevin's just told us, uh, yeah, the GM wins saying, there you go. I thought it were, uh, I thought there was something out there. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so what's your favourite moment on a cricket field? Keep it on the field, please, Harry. <laughs> um, for me, it's definitely got to be my first first class 100. Just the, the game and how and how it all happened was absolute <laughs> chaos. First, first innings, we got bowled out for 50 and... <laughs> And then ended up bowling them out for 145 on a on a tough wicket wicket down at Chelmsford against Essex, and and then I ended up getting 100 in the second innings and and kind of taking it to the bowlers. So I was um, I was really happy with that, and then we ended up getting the win as well. So it was um, even better. So contributing to a I'm assuming low scoring game, and you go out and blaze 100. Not only have you got runs under your belt, but did you feel then that? Actually, I can do this at this level. I can contribute. I can. I can be an asset. Yeah, I hadn't done as well as I'd wanted before that. So to go out and get a hundred against um, the champions was obviously it was really good. And and to be in a team with Bairstow, Root, and Pajara, and me be the only one really scoring runs is uh, pretty special. Brilliant. So that that that's. It's good, is that, because you, you've done all the stuff, you've travelled, you've played in the World Cup in the 19s, you've captained your country, but still going back to your home county and getting runs for them is the thing that's sticking in your mind the most. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think just, just the, the way the game went about as well, obviously, it was a tough pitch. It was a tough pitch to bat on. I was getting bowled out for 50 in the first innings and, and then to go on and win it was, uh, was really good. Right. Is that the proudest moment in your career as well? Charlie wants to know what the proudest moment is. Yeah, I think that's definitely got to be up there. Or, or my debut. Um, yeah, one of them too. So 
um, obviously Lords is a very special ground to play at, and um, but I think just get him a hundred just to. Brilliant. Oliver's doing his air. All right, Oliver, can you just mute your microphone, please, mate? <laughs> um, Harry, these uh, this is a good one, and I think um, you you might want to go into a bit of depth on this one. Um, is it difficult to cope with the massive expectations placed on young players with all the scrutiny from media, that's the sports media, social media in today's society? Sorry, <laughs> technical difficulties. You're all right, mate. Did you hear any of that? No, I didn't hear that. Sorry. All right. So, um, the question is, is it difficult to cope with the massive expectations placed on young players with all the scrutiny from media, including social media? I've been quite fortunate to have really had any uh, any bad comments, really. Um, I do feel sorry for some of the others who get sprayed nearly every game if they don't get any runs. But for me, I haven't really, I haven't really had anything bad said to me, so um, I, can't really, I can't really comment on that. Do you get any training to how to cope with it? Because no doubt it, it will come. You, you, you're a you're a sportsman. You're, you're you're in the you're in the limelight. You're going to be playing in front of crowds again. Sky Sports cameras, etc., etc., etc. Do you get any help to prep for that, or is it just a case of deal with it when it happens? I think people just say don't look at it. <laughs> That's the best way to deal with it. Really, just don't look at it. And, um, yeah, quite a lot of people they don't they delete their apps like Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter and whatever during the season, and um, just to try and get away from all that. Well, I hope your career doesn't take that turn and you do and you get sprayed after every innings. But um, yeah, hopefully when you do, you know how to cope with it. What's the number one piece of advice for a young cricketer from yourself? Like I said earlier, just enjoy it and. And don't take any uh, any moment for granted, and and enjoy it for as long as you can. Because, like I said, it's not gonna last forever, and and you play the game because you love it. So, yeah, enjoy it. Couldn't be any clearer. In terms of everything at Yorkshire that's going on now, um, what would you say is uh, the most exciting opportunity for the club? We've got we've got such a strong squad now. I think we've got every every aspect of of the game covered. So I think we're going to definitely going to be pushing for, for titles this year and, and hopefully we can, we can, we'll be able, be able to walk away at the end of the season with a bit of silverware. Do the club, in your opinion, still put the most pride on, um, on the county championship above the white ball comps? I think, I think they're all pretty similar to be fair, but we do, we do do a bit more training in red ball um, mainly because it's the start of the season at the end of the season, so you've got to try and get it all in just before it before it starts. Um, especially when you when you're just starting outside as well, it's obviously a lot different to being indoors. So we'll go we'll go a couple of weeks red ball and, and then we'll be ready to play. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, it's still the pinnacle of the game, red ball, and and it's it's such a it's such a test, and that's that's why it's called test cricket because it's so hard and and it's a test in in your all round game. Brilliant. So you just mentioned there about the preparation. We're coming out of the most frustrating year of everyone's lives, I should imagine, on this call. What advice have you got for the guys that are going to be coming out, hopefully on the 29th of March, and all of a sudden we're allowed to play cricket again? Um, what would you be doing in their shoes? Um, me is probably going into every every training session with a purpose and, and trying to get better. Um, I'd be asking people, after not batting or bowling for quite a, quite some while, um, which some of you you haven't done, I'll be asking my coaches and stuff what I needed, what I need to work on, and what I need to get better at. Um, I'll be trying to smash that, but also trying to trying to make what I'm good at uh, a super strength, um, and then making the stuff which I'm not good at a strength. Good man. Hopefully the weather plays its part, and we can we can get outside as early as we can in the piece and. And enjoy a full season uh, with no more lockdowns. That that would be the ideal. How much of um, how much did you miss crowds last summer? Um, we did we did an interview last night, and Dave really touched on it. You, you actually 
when you're out there, you you can't you can't really tell to be fair because you're so in the heat of the battle and and your your heads down and you you're trying to win the game. But definitely when you when you sat on the sideline waiting to bat, there's it's absolute silence. Um, I think that that played a big uh, made a big part and and there was no atmosphere in T20s and. Um, yeah, I did miss it quite a lot, but hopefully we can get crowds back in next year and, and have a full headingly packed. It's that that's that's weird. Eh? You're telling me that a packed out headingly and you can't you could you didn't notice because you were that focused on the game. You I didn't think, you couldn't tell. When you're batting though, I think when you're fielding, yeah, it makes a big difference. Um, the crowd, but when you're batting, it's more it's more bat v ball and, and you're more focused on the ball rather than what the crowd are doing. So, um. It makes a big difference when you're fielding and, and when you're sat on the sideline ready to go in, but when you're batting, it doesn't. I don't really feel like it makes a difference. So Obviously, it's nice to have people um, behind you and, and supporting you when you hit a boundary and cheering and everything, but when you're facing the ball, it's, you, you don't really really think about them. Nicely timed. We've just had a question saying, do you gain confidence from the Western Terrace when that's bouncing on the T29? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's quality to field, field out in front of the Western Terrace. Not so much at Old Trafford when they've got when they've got a background, but um, yeah, it's always it's always good fielding at Henley in front of the Western Terrace. It's become a bit of a fashionable fixture that at the T Twenty, and it's it's getting the fans are obviously into it, and it gets drilled up on social media as well beforehand. You're in, um, you're definitely in the firing line, aren't you? Some people have had some shockers, they've had some great games, but one mistake and your night can downward spiral very quickly. Absolutely, especially if you're the opposition. So, um, yeah, you got to try. You got to try and pick every ball up cleanly and catch it. Otherwise, you are uh, you're going to get sprayed all night. Can you train for that? Is, there, and everything. is there anything you do at training to sort of um, try and mind that? If we we do a few drills where you, you can't you can't put any crowd pressure on you, but you can do you can do other drills like closing your eyes and trying to listen to when the ball's getting hit and then catching it and. And stopping it and whatever, but um, we we do a, a few drills where you lie down on your front with your head down on the floor, eyes closed, and wait to hear it, and then you get up and catch it. So, um, yeah, you can't really do anything for crowds. No, unfortunately not. Which is your favourite ground? We're, we're going to questions from the chat group now. So if you've got anything you want to know from Harry, just type away and put it in the group chat. Uh, questions. Um, Harry, which is your favourite ground anywhere in the world? Um, my favourite ground is probably Queenstown in New Zealand. It was a, uh, it was very very nice ground. It was obviously a very very nice uh, um, drop back, and and if you Google it, it's a lovely ground, and, and it's a very nice pitch to bat on as well. So yeah, I, I enjoyed playing there. Yeah, I think the England women are over there at the moment, aren't they? I think they played their first game. Um, are they? Yeah, it's a great spot over there. Have you ever played um, at Newlands or have you just visited? No, I haven't. No. That, I don't think I've ever been up. there. Yeah. Oh, that, did we go there? We visited, uh, my, yeah. My yeah, we didn't play there, but yeah, you, we visited. We didn't, we didn't play, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it's the, there's some unbelievable spots abroad. We, we could do yeah. with some better, better backdrops over here. Um here we go. Seb, what did you feel like when you get done by a spinner's variation? Um, he's obviously talking about a World Cup there against Australia. I don't know. <laughs> Seb, are you? Do you, do you mean, do, do you mean that one, Seb? First ball. I think Seb got you out it when you played for JPP. Oh. You've just taken me. Uh, Is that how we're leading on to that? Right, ready? Ran straight past it, Harry. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Um... Well, he's a good bit of bowling then. If I didn't pick it and, and he landed it where you wanted to, I can't really do much. You just carried on walking from memory. You just nodded your head and carried on walking. It were um, it were very, very, very well bowled. Um, rather face spin or seam, Harry? I saw this question in your email earlier. Um, is that on a is that on a seaming wicket? Is that facing seam on a seam wicket and spin on a spinning wicket? Yeah, give them their extremes, yeah. Probably seam. Why? I don't know, actually. You can't, you can't, seems really hard to face because you don't know which way it's going. 
for a spin, you can you can see which way it's going to go, especially if you're facing an off spinner or someone who doesn't spin it both ways. Um, I think it's a tough question. That. Would you? All question. right, I'll give you. All right, Headingly, day one, April, or day two, where India have just played England. Headingly. There we go. I think I'd, I'd actually like quite quite like facing like on that pitch and having a challenge like that. It was a uh, it looked tough to bat on, but you can definitely see there was still runs to be scored with Rohit Sharma getting sixty in the in the second innings. Yeah, there is a third. There is a third option there, and that is indoor versus Stuart Guy with Sidearm. He's last, definitely last. <laughs> He's got a beamer in him. Oh, Stu, you what? Is Stu won't be happy with that? <laughs> he Stuart beat me last time. Know, I can't keep up. Um, here we go. Do you have a training routine when batting? Um, such as 45 minutes against and so on and so on. I don't quite understand that one. Um, Adam, do you want to come on, uh, unmute yourself and ask that, mate, in your words? How are you doing, Brooksy, mate? You all right? Good, how are you? <laughs> yeah, not bad. If you had to pick any batter in the world from any era, who would you love to have a bat with? A.B. de Villiers. Why? He's just so good. I think I try and my T20 game I try and model my batting on him as much as possible because he can hit the ball anywhere he makes bowlers look stupid so I think yeah definitely him and just to lead on from that so you say you model yourself on him in that format would you model yourself on him in all formats um, I, do, I, I do like to try and be my own man but there's certain parts of my game which I have tried to try and make well play shots like him for example, trying to hit it 360 is a big part of my T20 game. Trying to hit hit the ball wherever I can, um, but I do like to try and be my own my own player and, and play the way I want to play. Cheers, Bob. No worries. Right, I'll try and run through some of these then from the chat. Um, we have got. What age did you score your first hundred? What any any any, any standard hundred, or any hundred any 12. standard? Twelve. Playing for who? Uh, Bradford Schools. Yep. At Ilkley Cricket Club. Right. Got 123. And then I got bowled. Have a look back. <laughs> Hardest bowl you've ever had to face? There's a lot. Simon Harmer. Yeah, he's Simon best Harmer, to, probably. Yeah, he's, he's... On a spinning wicket, Simon Harmer. Pretty good. Got massive hands so he can rag it. <laughs> um, name the cricketer you would like to be most successful as. Sachin Tendulkar. If you could pick any cricketer in the world from any era, who would you love to have a bat with? I've just been asked that one. Oh, sorry, that trunks is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. It were a different Adam I meant. He's done me out of sight there. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> so have you got... So Yeah, so Adam Searle's question was, do you have a training routine um, when you're training for your batting? So, like, would you bat for 45 minutes and then have a break? I, I heard uh, Justin Langer once batted for two hours, so he was training to bat for sessions. Do you have anything like that, or is it dictated to by the coaches? Um, I like quite a lot of quantity. Um, last year, I did, I did a... A, 50, a couple of 50 over net sessions so I got one of the coaches to sling out with 50 overs um, I bet he thanked he, you for that over there he, no he, he actually wanted to it was Damsey he wanted to he uh, he wanted to help me out so he slung out with 50 overs and we and we scored it over by over so it was uh, it was quite good I've just seen but, a squirm on couch Wayne is he up, he up for that <laughs> he wouldn't have a shoulder left would he <laughs> oh, it might be Damsey with that what if um what if when you were growing up and you're at a club ground, what would you do or what would you still do to this day? Would you have a few underarms? What if there's no nets or would you just mentally prepare or what did you um, do? That's where that that preparation the day before comes in. Um, it's very important for me. Uh, I'd rather bat for two hours the day before and not bat on the day. So um, 
I'd, like I said, I, I, I don't really want to bat on the day of a game because if you go out and you start plinking them everywhere and you nick off a few times, get out LBW, then you, you're going into the game with no confidence. So having a long bat the day before and, and feeling prepared is massive. Cricket night, net on a Thursday night, would you be happy with that to then go into Saturday? Um, no, not for me personally. <laughs> personally, but I'd, I'd probably try and find some time to have a bat on a Friday and, and get a mate to throw at me or whatever. Good stuff. We've got a, one from Tilly here uh, to challenge your knowledge on the female game. Who's going to be the most success, su successful Northern Charger team, male or female? Bearing in mind, Lev's on the call, so be careful, Harry. I don't really know anything about the girls, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I'd like I'd like to say my team, obviously. <laughs> um, hopefully, take, hopefully we I'll can. Take, because you're so new to your squad, we'll give you a couple of weeks before you can get to know your team Thank members. You. And, Thank and, you. And, and, I'll come and, back to you on that one. Yeah, it's in the post. Um, so, are you a bat badger? Have you got? Do your bats have to be exactly the same, same brand, same, same grip, everything the same? Uh, yeah, I do. Try, I do like a bat, especially a new one. They're very nice. Um, but yeah, I do like to have my bats. My bats the same shape, especially. I'm not really that bothered about weight unless it's too heavy. Um, I'm quite particular with uh, with my handle as well. I don't like it to be too thick. I like I like quite a thin bat uh, bat handle. So um, yeah, I've got I've got quite a few which are all the same shape at the minute, and I'm I'm really happy with them. Good stuff. Grey Nichols, by the way. <laughs> Getting a sponsor out there. If anybody Absolutely. wants to buy a bat, go to Grey Nichols. Very, very good kit. This is brilliant. I love how this is phrased from Charlie. When you make your England debut, where would you like to make it? I like that. Uh, <laughs> good question. I think it's got to be in an Ashes. Um, at Lords, I'd probably say. I think. But I'd take anywhere at the minute. I was going to say, there's always a second answer, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, I think I've got through most of them there. I'll, I'll have missed some because they came in thick and fast. I love. Can we finish on this one? I really like this. What's the worst mistake you've ever made in your cricketing career? <laughs> it's not from me, by the way. Um... I can't answer that one. On the field, have you made any really bad mistakes on the field and you've come off and thought, I should have won us that game or I, I, I might yeah. play that differently next time? I, I, don't, I don't think it'll probably be my worst mistake, but last year against um, Lancashire uh, at Old Trafford, I've just swept the spinner for six and I tried to sweep him again and, and got out LBW and and then we ended up losing a quick quick few wickets in a row and and, and probably cost us a game. But um yeah, that was probably one of my one of my um worst mistakes. And with that red or white ball? That was white, that was T twenty. Right. So you can be forgiven for going again because it's that's the format. Yeah, but I probably didn't need to. We only needed about eight or nine and over, so that six was enough enough for that overs. Um, especially when he was bowling quite quick and, and wasn't as easy as easy as it was to sweep. That's um, that's the maturity coming out again, and it's something's changed, Harry. You're uh, you're sounding different. Definitely. Should we get some? Uh, not that we're allowed, but if we were, would uh, some money on you getting a thousand runs this year? Do you think? Um, Feeling good. Preparation. See, goal. I don't, I don't, oh. I don't like answering this question. Uh, I've got my appraisal next week, I think, so they'll be asking me what what my what my goals are for this year. Um, and, I, and I won't be telling them because I don't like telling anybody because if it doesn't happen then you look like a, um, a you don't look very good so I'm not going to tell you I'm afraid that's fine would you take a thousand runs and second in the champo or 400 runs and a champo win uh, what type of question is that <laughs> definitely the second one alright well it took you a while to answer it you had to think about it though didn't you no, definitely the second one. Definitely win over over the runs. I went I really, I'd really like low then with the runs as well. Just, yeah, I'd like just, to yeah. think I've got a few more runs than that, though. That's the answer I wanted. That, there we go. That's what I wanted. Anything else from any of the coaches or anyone online before we let Harry go and cook his tea? Okay. 
No, I think we're good. Harry, thank you very much for your time, mate. Very much appreciated. Thanks for your honesty. Um, and hopefully you've uh, given some very good information there to some budding young cricketers who can get training very soon, uh, as soon as the ECB tells we're allowed. We're assuming late March, early April, we will be outdoor. Fingers crossed. Go well. The Go well, guys. So, yeah, thanks for your time, mate, and all the best for this year with the with the Yorkshire, with the 100, everything. All the best, pal. Thank you. Cheers, Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Thank guys. You. See you later.